What's up guys, it's good to see you. Back here with another Monday upload. What, this is four, five in a row, four in a row? Not too bad, we're gonna keep this going. Every Monday, 9 a.m., I upload videos like this. Subscribe if you're new around here, especially if you're curious about what operating system I'm gonna have in this video. You can kind of see it in the background right there. That video going over is gonna be out in the next week or two. The reason I keep pushing it back is because this, like I said, this operating system isn't mine. I'm just gonna briefly go over this one, but I'm gonna recreate a whole new Linux, Arch Linux Rice that suits exactly what I want. Cause there's there's a few things that I've realized. It's like when you move into a house, you don't know exactly what you like until you live in a house on your own. Maybe a few different houses you say, oh, I like this here, I like that there, don't like this, don't like that. So I'm gonna recreate my own Arch Linux Rice. And that is gonna be the main video. And I think it's gonna be better than this one. For me, it will be. Hopefully y'all will like it as well. But until then, I wanna go over my very first machine learning program I ever coded. And unlike the video where I went over my first program I ever coded, that wasn't exactly my entire first program it was only the first program that I coded on that machine. Also, I didn't even code the whole entire thing. It was done by my teacher and I just filled in the gaps, which I addressed in the video, but whatever. This video, this is the actual first ever machine learning program I ever coded. It's in Python. Y'all may, may have thought that I am new to Python. I've created a few things in Python. I just was never the biggest fan of it. And I did this in my uh, CS480 artificial intelligence course using uh, backtracking algorithms. One naive backtracking al algorithms, another one being MRV. So without further ado, let's hop into it. So the first machine learning program I ever coded, I'll actually link below because it's a repository on my GitHub. It is the Sudoku Solver in Python. Uh, I coded this in the fall 2017, like I said, CS480 artificial intelligence course, naive backtracking algorithm, smart backtracking algorithm. If you're unfamiliar with Sudoku, how about I just explain it to you? So this is a basic Sudoku puzzle uh, layout. This is how it starts out where you need to do one through nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in every single column, and in every single row, and in every single three by three grid. You can see how these are thicker lines. So this is a three by three, that's a three by three, that's a three by three. You cannot have any repeating numbers. You see what I'm saying? So what I did as a, uh, as, a as a program, as par part of my course, is I created a backtracking algorithm to place Sudoku, which it's basically a uh, slightly more organized brute force technique. Uh, I guess that's a good way to describe it. I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna get clone this so we can see if this still works. I get clone, and how do I do that? There we go. All right, we're gonna hop into the Sudoku, uh, wait, Sudoku solver. See what files are in there. All right, we have all this. And I think, how do I do this? Python sudoku.py, do I need to specify what test case? Wait, I have instructions. Okay, Python sudoku.py for the naive, naive backtracking algorithm. And we're gonna input the file name, which this is the file name. And as you can see, this is the grid. So, you know, the, there are nine rows, nine columns. The zeros are the empty spaces. Obviously the numbers are the filled in spaces. And if this were a, a user interactive game, then we would be trying to figure out what numbers to fill, but the AI is going to be doing that instead. And would you look at that? So it's not as interesting as some of my videos where you can actually see the generations and the genetic algorithms because well, this is a different type of algorithm and it's also just all terminal based instead of uh, Anyway, amount of recursions, 71. So basically what that means is it went through 71 renditions until it came to a actual working solution. So the way it works is that it, it tries to fill in the puzzle one by one by one, and it eliminates every single one in which it fails. Let's take a look into the code. Sudoku.py. So this is what we just ran. I wanna go through, let's see if I can remember exactly how this works. So it's fairly it's fairly simple. It's only 81 lines, not even considering that. But what do we have? So we have, we need to be able to read the text file, which in this case, we had the text file that I showed you previously, text case one, where it created the board and the empty spots for uh, us or the AI to solve. It puts it in a matrix, all right? And now we have to check the Sudoku. So I'm assuming what this does is it is checking for every single every single attempt where you put in a number into a blank spot, it is making sure that it doesn't break the rules. So for i in range zero through nine, if matrix board row i equals number, check one. 
same thing but for column and then same thing but for that three by three grid that I told you previously. So it's just checking if there's any duplicate numbers and then what it's gonna do is if it does check one, which if any of these do occur, any duplicate occurs, checks one, returns false, says this is bad, try, try, try again. Otherwise it returns true, calls. So all right, so this is the amount of recursions. So every single time it is attempting to solve this uh, this Sudoku puzzle, that is one call. So down here, when we print out amount of recursions, then it should be number of calls. That's right. That's fairly self-explanatory. It prints out the actual solution, as you can see here, and then it prints out amount of recursions, which in this case was 71. And then at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you fill in every single zero, every single blank spot. So that is what this does. Considering zero is not a part of it, it is only one through nine. If there is a zero, so if there's a blank spot, it returns false. Therefore, you have to continue to fill each and every blank spot. So you have a full on solved Sudoku puzzle. Fairly straightforward. All right, so that was the naive backtracking algorithm. Then let's see, let's take a look at the smart backtracking algorithm. So what do I wanna do first? I want to, actually, let's see how the amount of recursions we got going on here. Um, underscore MRV, yeah. Test case one, same exact test case. Matter recursions is 50. So this one is the smart backtracking algorithm. Obviously, it's supposed to be better, and it is better. So 50 recursion, that, that is good. And I'm going to pull this up, but I also want to explain the differences between the naive backtracking algorithm and the smart backtracking algorithm. So the way it works with the regular backtracking algorithm is that it takes the very first blank. So actually, if we open up the test case one, the exact puzzle that the AI, the AI is trying to solve, and it is going from the first blank to the second blank to the third blank to the fourth blank to the fifth, so on and so forth. That is how the naive backtracking algorithm works. However, for the smart backtracking algorithm or the MRV, that stands for minimum remaining values. So that would probably be how you and I would go about solving Sudoku. We wouldn't just go to the very first blank and try to figure it out from there. And this is instance, okay, maybe we would because there's only two possible values that it could be. However, what we would do is we would try to find one where there's only one remaining value that it could be. So there's only one possibility and we would fill in that and then we would find the next one based on that. And that is what the MRV does. It starts filling in the rest of the board instead of picking the very first blank in its path. So let's take a look at the actual code. It should be the same except for that small tweak right there. So we have the read file, same. Check Sudoku, same. Number of calls, which as we uh, established that is the amount of recursions, same. By same, I mean the code is exactly the same. And then the Sudoku solver. I did kind of gl gloss over this here in the uh, initial Sudoku.py, but wait a second, no, this. I did kind of gloss over this in the uh, the previous Sudoku.py, but I mean, it, it does exactly what I just told you it does. It goes from blank to blank, testing out the numbers that it, that it can be. So for the MRV within our Sudoku solver, you can see that it has a couple different value, like it has a checking range value, which it doesn't have in the Sudoku.py. In the Sudoku.py, we have four, four, if, we have our for loop, for loop, if, but we also have a couple temporary values. We also have a for loop, and then we assign the second temporary value, we assign the initial temporary value. Well, I guess we reassign the initial temporary value. And then we assign the checking the range. And then we use all of this code to figure out the minimum range selection. And that's, that's basically it. So this code right here, and pretty much this code right here, that's the only difference between the naive backtracking algorithm and the smart backtracking algorithm. So that's it. Very, very interesting. I actually wonder how some of these other ones go. So let's try Polysodoku one. Let's go with the two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Th over 3000 recursions. Let's see how our MRV works with the second. 436. Very interesting. Is this a different? No, it's the same size matrix. I guess it just has a lot more blanks. Good grief, 22,000. I'm getting these all laid out so we can just quickly go over them, but 22, oh my goodness, 22,000. I don't even know, how does that even work? 
How do you how are you able to go through twenty two thousand recursions where the ZMRV goes through fifty four? Let me check that one out. Test case, what is this? Test case five. I was done with this video. I just wanted to see this. <laughs> Test case five. So we have a lot of zero I mean, it looks like a regular suit. Okay, it's probably one of the more difficult ones. Okay. Oh, I labeled them. Wow. How convenient. So this one is evil. This one's evil, but with the regular stoke, wait, no, that's not it. The evil one is 3,000, but the hard one is 22,000? Yeah, that makes sense, Farce. Good job, buddy. What about three? Three is easy, four is medium, and five is hard. I wonder why I labeled that one evil. Evil was probably not the proper whatever. It, it actually was evil for the MRV, I think. Let's go back through this. So we have test case one with the naive and with the smart. We already saw that. 71 recursions, 50 recursions respectively. The next test case two for the naive, we have 3,013. For the smart, we have 436. That is... My friends is why I said it was evil because it's <laughs> it's just not very nice overall because of the MR whichever one the MRV struggles on the most because that is the more optimized algorithm out of the two then that is evil more evil than the hard one it's harder than the hard one so okay makes sense I'm not as dumb as I thought I was okay so naive is 312 and then the smart is 47 for test case three. Test case four, we have 2187 and then 127. And then test case five, this is where we have 22,704. However, this is actually the second. No, this is the third best performing for the MRV, right? So technically this one is harder than the hard. Okay, never mind. I'm dumb again. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, please. That helps the YouTube algorithm and that helps me be able to share uh, these fun videos, computer science coding, and my channel overall with the masses if the YouTube algorithm ends up picking up my video. Or you don't have to rely on the YouTube algorithm. You can just subscribe to the channel and you get these pushed to your inbox every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. One day I'm gonna miss an upload. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick myself, but if I ever miss an upload, just expect maybe an extra upload the next week. I mean, I have to make it up somehow, right? I don't plan to miss an upload anytime soon, though. So subscribe. Next video is next week, Monday, 9 a.m. I'll see you on the next one.